changes with Cyclone uh, Yasi overnight. Cyclone Yasi overnight has got faster, it has gone further north and it is intensifying. It has now speeded up to a system travelling at approximately 40 kilometres an hour. What this means is that uh, the most likely crossing time is at 1am on Thursday morning. It has moved north and the high risk area is now between Cairns and Innisfail and the cyclone uh, warning area has extended as far north as Cooktown. We expect to see gale force uh, and destructive winds from the Mossman to Air Home Hill area. Uh, I should say in relation to uh, predictions at this stage, uh, sometime tomorrow morning, uh, the Bureau of Meteorology has a radar station on Willis Island, uh, which is east of Cairns. Uh, the cyclone is expected to cross Willis Island uh, sometime tomorrow morning. Uh, the staff who are located on Willis Island have a Category 5 cyclone shelter, uh, but it will come onto their radar system mm -hmm. at that point. At that point, we will be uh, likely to have a crossing point down to about a 50 kilometre degree of accuracy and precision. This cyclone is, uh, has also intensified overnight. It is now most likely to cross the coast at an upper level Category 4. By comparison, Cyclone Larry was a mid-level Category 4. So we are expecting to see winds of more than 250 kilometres an hour and these are winds of higher uh, intensity than Cyclone Larry. Uh, this, of course, is not only a system now tracking as more intense than Cyclone Larry, it is significantly larger than Cyclone Larry. So the uh, areas uh, on the north and south of the crossing point will likely to experience significant weather disruptions. This system is so big that even at a uh, low tide, 100 kilometres south of the centre, we would expect to see some tidal storm surge activity. If there is any uh, silver lining here, the uh, movement of the cyclone slightly north has meant that when it travels west and goes inland, it is less likely to drop uh, all of that uh, massive rainfall into the central Queensland catchment areas that have already experienced flooding and more likely, no guarantees, but more likely to head into the Gulf and take the rain into areas more able to cope with it. This system is such a large system that the eye of this cyclone, that is a period that uh, people in the immediate area will experience as a period of calm, could last for more than an hour. And it's very important that people understand uh, that calm is not an opportunity to go walking outside and to have a look around. This is such a big system that the eye could last for more than an hour and uh, at the end of that uh, period the next thing that will be felt is the strongest possible winds. So uh, those people who are in the eye of this uh, storm, uh, we're getting this message out early so that people know not to get out and about. Uh, cyclone warnings will start today at 11 o'clock. As I said it will extend from a period of, uh, it will extend from Cooktown in the north uh, down uh, into the southern areas around Air and Home Hill. But those people who are not in the critical uh, area between Cairns and Innisfail need to prepare for significant uh, and difficult weather as well. It's likely that those on the Atherton and Tablelands will experience weather conditions of around a Category 3 cyclone. Townsville can expect uh, wind and other weather conditions of around a Category 2 cyclone. And Mackay and Whit Sundays can expect uh, Category 1 conditions, that is heavy rainfall, very rough weather, high surges and strong winds. So we will expect to see very difficult and potentially dangerous weather uh, a long way down the coast out of the danger zone. Uh, uh, this system will be accompanied by significant storm surge activity that could, uh, or is likely to lead to uh, very high uh, uh, very high amounts of water coming into flash flooding uh, in the areas that are affected. Uh, if this cyclone does hit as currently predicted around 1am, that <coughs> hopefully will be low tide. However, if it accelerates or slows down, it could come back into the high tide range. So the storm surge warnings for low-lying and waterfront areas remain and people on, uh, on either side of the Cairns and Innisfail area should still be taking every precaution and mm. considering relocation. 
as you can see, there has been some changes overnight and we can expect that there might be some further changes in the next uh, 24 to 36 hours. That means that we are making decisions and giving advice in a highly volatile situation. Uh, what we do know is that we can expect to see uh, devastating uh, and destructive winds in uh, this region as early as tomorrow morning. That means that travel after about 8 a.m. tomorrow, travel anywhere north of Townsville is going to be extremely difficult. We would anticipate that airports are likely to close tomorrow and we would expect that major roads are likely to be either shut or have very limited access on them and that the driving conditions uh, will be uh, very, very extreme. So really what that means, today is the time to act. Today is the last opportunity for people to safely prepare for this event. Preparation means, uh, firstly, if you are in a low-lying or waterfront area uh, in the danger zone and beyond, you need to relocate yourself and your family. Local disaster management groups are meeting in each of these areas this morning and a number of them will take a decision to move to mandatory uh, relocations and evacuations. If you have an emergency service officer or a police officer knock on your door and ask you and your family to move, I ask you to cooperate with them. What we've seen in the last five weeks is that where communities cooperated with authorities, we were able to protect lives. Where communities got enough warning to prepare, we could keep them safe. We do have time to prepare, but that time is now and it is today. For those who are not in uh, those waterfront low-lying areas but in the affected zone, uh, you need to take action to protect your property, that is to lock away your vehicles, to put away outdoor garden furniture and to lock away anything that could become a missile in cyclonic winds. You also, anyone from uh, Mackay to Cooktown needs to prepare to be self-sufficient for a period of time. The size and extremity of this storm will take down power lines, will take out electricity substations. You need to prepare for a period of time without electricity. That means getting batteries for torches and radios. It means stocking up on food and fuel, and it means making sure you've got candles and other equipment that will see you and your family through a period without electricity. We can't say how long that might be, but we do know in some places it could be for an extended period of time. There are people here in this region who are trying to leave the region today, particularly people who are tourists or visitors to the region. Uh, and I know that people are getting advice that airlines are full. Uh, can I say that the major airlines, Jetstar, Qantas and Virgin, uh, will be putting on extra flights into the region today. So can I encourage people, if you are wanting to leave by air, today is the last opportunity to do that most likely. And you should contact airlines and let them know that you want to be on one of the flights that they will bring in today. Uh, in relation, particularly now that the <coughs> cyclone has moved north uh, and the very strong likelihood of tidal, uh, sorry, of storm surge, floodwaters, uh, we are now looking uh, very seriously at a uh, evacuation of Cairns Base Hospital. Cairns Base Hospital is on the Esplanade and will be susceptible to storm surge. There are approximately 300 patients uh, who are currently inpatients and who may need to be completely evacuated to Brisbane. Uh, and there is a further 60 patients at the Cairns uh, private hospital that's similarly located. Uh, work is now occurring with the Australian Defence Force to do a massive uh, evacuation, potentially out of the Cairns hospital later today. When will that decision be made then? Uh, that'll be made uh, in the next couple of hours when we have refined the uh, storm surge advice from the Bureau of Meteorology uh, and the uh, Department of Environment and Resource Management expert, experts. Finally, can I just say that uh, uh, all schools, uh, Catholic, independent and state schools in the far north Queensland district uh, will be closed uh, for Wednesday, Thursday and Friday of this week. Letters will be going out with children going home from school today. And I advise parents that all schools in the Catholic education, uh, independent and state sectors in the far north Queensland region that extends uh, down to south of Townsville will be closed. Uh, for a further 62 schools in the north Queensland region will be closed on Wednesday, uh, depending on uh, where this cyclone hits. But on current advice, that's uh, 
that's where we would expect to see. So uh, most schools in this uh, region closed, all schools closed Wednesday and uh, most closed Thursday and Friday as well. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this storm is huge and it is life threatening. Being, being well prepared is our best defence. I know many of uh, us will feel that uh, Queensland has already borne about as much as we can bear when it comes to disasters and storms. But more is being asked of us and I am confident that we are able to uh, rise to this next challenge. We have redeployed uh, considerable staff and we will do more today. Swift water rescue teams, emergency staff and extra police are already in place and more will be deployed into the uh, Cooktown and Cairns regions today. We will have every available resource uh, on site and in place uh, in the event that this cyclone as currently predicted crosses our coast in the next uh, 48 hours or so. Ian, did you want to do that? Thank you, Premier. Can I just reiterate, please make no mistake, this storm is a deadly event. People need to take action between now and tomorrow morning, after which time in the high impact areas, it will be un unsafe to travel. So do not make any mistake, do not be undecided. Take action now either to prepare yourself to shelter in place uh, if you are out of the, the storm surge areas and that information is available through local government uh, either on their websites or by telephone. <coughs> um, but uh, if you are in those storm surge zones, you must relocate um, voluntarily or uh, as the Premier rightly said, later on today there will probably, uh, most probably, be mandatory evacuation orders uh, made and that is likely by lunchtime today. So now is the time to act. Prepare yourself. Uh, relocate out of the high risk zones if that is at all possible. That is the best information uh, that we can give you at this time. I should, uh, sorry, I should add on that point that uh, I have um, the Minister for Emergency Services and myself had this morning signed uh, preemptive disaster declarations for all local government areas in the central Queensland, northern Queensland, far northern Queensland and western areas uh, to ensure that police and emergency workers required to do mandatory evacuations will have all legal powers to do so. But as we've seen over the last five weeks, I would hope they do not need to use those powers. We will only get through this with cooperation and working together and I'm confident that the people of uh, northern and far northern Queensland uh, will be uh, will be safer if they can do that. Will the defence force be assisting with any other evacuations apart from Camp Hospital? At this stage, we're not uh, we're, we're not in need of any defence force assets for other evacuations, but that will be monitored on a regular basis. We do have senior representatives of the ADF uh, on the State Disaster Management Group and on the uh, local uh, group in Townsville, uh, and they stand ready to deploy and we're most likely to need their assistance after this event has crossed Where the Where will the patients be taken to? They will be uh, accommodated here in Brisbane. Uh, some elective surgery may need to be cancelled to accommodate those patients, uh, but across the southeast we have spare capacity in hospitals and that is being managed as I speak. So it's a very big exercise. Uh, some patients, and that's the, the uh, health the hospital workers in Cairns are now working. Some patients may be able to return home, maybe a day <coughs> earlier than they planned. Uh, others will need to be relocated. Did you say how many? There are between 250 and 300 patients who may need evacuation. Uh, it's in a range because we're now working with every single patient. Uh, some who are able to go home may prefer to do so and they will be safer in doing so. Uh, so that exercise is occurring right now. Uh, the Cairns Space Hospital is on the Esplanade. It is very likely to be subject to significant storm surge activity if uh, the cyclone hits on its current forecast uh, pattern. We don't want to be uh, undertaking this exercise tomorrow in destructive uh, gale force winds. How, how, so will, they be, how will they be transported to Brisbane, the patients? Is there a they will be taken uh, with a combination, obviously, of uh, ambulances to the airport in Cairns and uh, transported by uh, Hercules by the ADF is the current plan. How do you that plan to really Cairns' ability to deal with um, medical emergencies? Like the Thank you, good question. Uh, there are other health facilities in Cairns uh, that are not in the tidal uh, storm surge zone, which will be uh, equipped to deal uh, with medical emergencies. So that will be, they will be, there will be another facility in Cairns and we're just working through which one it will be. Uh, that is out of the immediate storm surge area that will be equipped to deal with medical emergencies. Cancer staff and doctors and nurses 
uh, will be staying in Cairns to manage those emergencies. So where, where is that? Where should people go? If they need we'll be able to advise you. We just uh, they have a number of health facilities, and they're just currently working out which one is best. But there are a couple of options, and they may in fact end up with two or three on the northern and southern sides of Cairns. So uh, that will be advised to people in Cairns uh, throughout the day, should the evacuation occur. Does the evacuation message still extend to people south of, of Townsville, like that far south? Yes, we do expect to see, as I said. Uh, in Townsville, Category 2, cyclonic conditions, and in Mackay, Category 1, uh, we are unlikely to see the storm surge that we were worried about in places like Mackay if the cyclone hits that low tide. But that is still a very big if. It accelerated <coughs> overnight, and if it accelerated again overnight tonight, that could move it into a high tide range. So I understand and uh, that people want absolute accuracy, Unfortunately, in these events, there is a level of volatility and some people may relocate and ultimately it's unnecessary. I would rather you were inconvenienced for three days than have your lives threatened by dangerous, fast rising, uh, powerful storm surge waters. So the message to people in those areas is still, if you're in a low lying area, if you're on the waterfront and you can relocate, it is the safest and best thing to do. Ian, you spoke to spoke of mandatory evacuations at lunchtime today. Where will they be happening? Uh, certainly in the high impact areas, and that will be uh, obviously in the Cairns area and south. Um, one of the challenges that we have with this is the, uh, the moving nature of where landfall may be. Um, and again, that's why we haven't speci specified that, because we need everyone to be prepared. On the southern side of landfall, we will expect significant storm surge. Um, and again, this is going to be impacted by the timing because of the tides. So mandatory evacuation orders will probably be put in place for, for all areas from uh, uh, certainly Mossman, um, probably all the way down to at least Cardwell. Mm. So how many people potentially is that involving? It's about a quarter of a million um, in that total area, but obviously not all of them live on the front. Um, in, the, in those storm surge areas, um, but the mapping provides people with an indication whether their, their residence is located in that, and people need to go online or to ring their local council to find out if they're in a high risk area. But we are talking about thousands of people in those at risk areas of storm surge if uh, we see this coming to the Cairns region. But there won't be mandatory evacuations in town for or air or um, it is possible, um, uh, whilst I mentioned Cardwell, the timing of this and the, as the information uh, becomes clearer as we get nearer to uh, landfall, which it's still expected to be in the, early, uh, in the early hours of Thursday morning or late on Wednesday evening, um, as that becomes narrower and narrower, we will have a much better idea where that is. So we may put mandatory orders in place so that we can act right up to the last possible moment to ask people to get out. Now that is likely to be before 8 to 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. When's the next uh, update from the Murder Bureau? There will be uh, further information and modelling on storm surge activity around uh, 11 o'clock uh, today provided to councils and so that will be available uh, and information about mandatory evacuations around lunchtime or just after lunchtime. Uh, the Weather Bureau will uh, update all of its models again in time for the 5 o'clock State Disaster Management Group meeting. In terms of tracking these sorts of changes, there needs to be a bit of time in between the models to get uh, an indication of movement. Have you anticipated yet another one of these working at lunchtime there? Uh, look, I think it would be useful. Uh, I'm conscious that we may have more information in relation to mandatory movements by then, and I, I probably have confirmation on Cairns Base Hospital and the other um, emergency medical treatment facilities in Cairns. So, uh, it is, as I said, a changing, volatile situation. We're trying to give people the information they need. Uh, it, we can't uh, give people with the same sort of preci precision that you can with a slowly moving, uh, rising river in a flood, and people will just have to uh, accept that uh, this volatile information, or this volatile situation, we give you as much information so that you can make the best decision for you and your family. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you.